Welcome to the Habits and Hustle podcast, a podcast that uncovers the rituals, unspoken habits, and mindsets of extraordinary people. A podcast powered by Habit Nest. Now here's your host, Jennifer Cohen. All right, so today on the podcast, we have Rob Freed, who was a very successful movie producer who then pivoted and transitioned into uh, being CEO of a company called Chromadex, which is a very innovative health company. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Thank you, Jen. It's really nice to meet you. I actually am a big fan of your product. Um, and I, I've been taking, it's called True Niogen, and I've been taking it for probably a year, even before I even knew you existed. So that's why it's even more of a pleasure to meet you in person. I guess we should start because living here in LA, of course, we're living in Hollywood. Everyone moves here by the droves to get into the movie business, right? Like anybody, they're like cutting off their like right arm just to like be an assistant's assistant. And here you are like at the top of your game and you're producing very, very successful movies like Collateral, uh, Godzilla, Rudy. And then you're like, you know what? Mm, I'm going to leave and just basically uh, go into you know, different kinds of entrepreneurial experiences. So explain that process and why, why Rob? Why leave movies? Yeah. Why leave movies? The, the glamor and the glitz for, for this. So it wasn't a decision. It wasn't one day I decided I was going to leave the film business. Okay. I think that I, if I reflect back, I think that I am uh, blessed or cursed <laughs> with the courage to pursue my passion. And I've been that way as long as I can remember. And I was uh, excited about making films. I felt like I had something to say early mm -hmm. uh, in my career. And then I felt like I had said it. And then some other things excited me that I pursued. So then like, so you, you're from New York. We talked about that earlier. And then you, so you moved to LA to become a, a producer? Like what was like, a, like, start from the beginning, like give me the trajectory of, of your life, like from when you were an embryo on, no, no, just kidding. Just when, <laughs> you know, from like how you kind of started. So when you were in New York, you said, mm, I'm going to move to LA. And <clears throat> how did that even be, how did you become so success, like so successful in that world? Because like I said earlier, and like everyone knows, it's one of the hardest businesses to break into. Well, I think in terms of the success that I had in the motion picture industry, I think a lot of the reason why I was successful early is because I was not somebody that was committed to being successful mm. in the motion picture industry. That's interesting. So in some ways I was different. Okay. How? I didn't care as much. It wasn't part of my DNA to make right. films. So I, how did you fall into it or get into I it? I grew up in New York. And my, uh, my father was a, a Holocaust survivor. And I had uh, four brothers, I have four brothers and sisters, and it's an extremely, extremely close knit family. Right. Uh, and my, to my parents, the idea of family was very, very important, as was, frankly, Judaism. Right. And uh, it was important that we get educated. So my father uh, managed to escape and come over in uh, September of 1939. And uh, he joined the war, fought in the war. Wow. And then uh, after the war, met my mother in the Bronx, in New York. Wow. And uh, started a, a bar mitzvah and wedding photography studio in the Bronx, which is still there today, 60 plus years later, my brother runs it. That's incredible, really amazing. This is all very familiar to me. This is, you kind of sound like you grew up similar to me. So, and we have a lot of family, as I said, yeah. in, in Canada. Yeah, exactly. We're going to play, we'll play that whole Jewish geography thing afterwards. Okay. Yeah. So I went to college at Cornell and studied industrial and labor relations, which is a, a story of like immigrant workers and mm. migrant workers and economics. And then I got an MBA at Columbia. Yeah. So you're really stupid is what you're trying to tell well, me. Well, <laughs> Uh, and when I graduated school, I wasn't sure what I wanted right. to do. I contemplated many uh, alternatives. I actually had applied to their law school and mm. I contemplated walk, working on Wall Street. 
but Columbia Pictures, the film studio, was interested in hiring a strategic planning analyst. Uh, I was actually in Palm Springs for spring break and the job got posted. And I called them up at Columbia, at Columbia and Burbank and I said, you know, I'm in Palm Springs. They said, come in to interview. So I, I drove into Burbank, interviewed with them and they offered me the job and I took it. And the job was basically a grunt. Right. I was writing scripts and, and doing financial analysis and breaking everything down into cash. And at that time in the mid eighties, that was sort of a new way of thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, the software platform was something called VisiCalc, which is the predecessor to Excel. Mm. But the yeah. idea of thinking financially and breaking things down into cash and analyzing them and creating the optimization strategies, the calculus of the business was new. Right. And because it was new, I became a known entity throughout the company as this oh, young sure. guy who was doing something new. Right. And innovative. Right. So it's kind of like follows you with your career, it sounds like. This is the beginning. And I wasn't running around wanting to read scripts or meet stars or I wasn't politicking. Mm -hmm. I was just doing my financial analysis and my work and I was working for the president of the studio. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so I became a known entity. And promotion, promotion, this change, that change. Eventually, by the th within three years, I got to be the executive vice president in charge of production at Columbia Pictures. It was a bizarre series of events. Just after three years. Yeah. Wow, that's fast. That's a fast track, like beyond. Yeah. When I got my first production job, I had never read a screenplay. Wow, that's crazy. But the, the movies were hits. Like, uh, you know, just for, for whatever reason, I was very fortunate that the films that I worked on early were very, right. very successful movies. Well, I was but asking it was like you. Bull Durham yeah. and Hoosiers and, and uh, a thing called Mississippi Burning and Robocop. These movies were all successful. So I became the hot guy. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, exactly. What was the, So when you left Columbia, what was your title back when you left? The first when I left the studio? Yeah, when you left the studio. Well, in, in, 19, in the early 90s, Sony bought the studio. Mm, right, I remember So that. I had already achieved this relatively high level position, so I had a lot of stock. Right. And I got this windfall check. I remember calling my father and I said, Dad, look at this check that I got. It was like, you know, I was like crying my eyes. Right. So was he. I can imagine, right? Yeah. And so I quit. I started my own, I said, I'm on my own now. You know, I've done what I need to do and I'm going to start producing. And I started producing movies, you know, r right away because I felt I didn't need to be an executive anymore. So that's when you, so you left Columbia Sony and, and then... And I became a producer at Columbia. At, and then you became, so you, like, kind of like you got like, um, you had like a deal with them kind of thing. Yeah. Like a production deal. A production deal. A production deal. So the, under your, under your umbrella. Yeah. Freed Films. Yeah. Freed as Films. As it were. And then under Freed Films, was that where Collateral was then? Yes. Free, well, uh, sort of. Uh, so I formed Freed Films and, and again, we, I got very lucky, like, uh, Rudy and Axe Murder were the very first two movies and I produced it. The first thing I did was take a course at UCLA on producing. Yeah, right. <laughs> so you had no idea how to do that. Really. I mean, and then I produced a short film just to learn. Wow. And, and it, I, I won an Oscar for the short film. It was just unbelievable, fortuitous luck. You won an Oscar? What was the short film called? It was called Session Man. It was about a, it was a really cool story about a, a, a session rock guitarist who gets a call to play with the equivalent of the Rolling Stones. Oh, wow. And then during the session, you know, the overnight session, the equivalent to Mick Jagger and Keith Richards have a fight and Keith, the Keith Richards character quits. And the Mick Jagger character says to him, listen, you know, we're about to go on tour. You want to tour with us? Yeah. Replace Keith Richards. And he's a guy, he's in his 40s. It was, it was played by an actor named James Remar. Do you know who that is? No, yeah, who's that? Actor. I don't even know. Who he's a great actor, but character actor. Oh, I don't know who that is. Anyway, uh, so he's like playing the whole night thinking I'm now with the Stones. I went from a session guitarist to the Stones. And we had a great session guitarist through the uh, music, a guy named Wadi Wachtel. To this very day is one of the truly most respected session guitarists in the history of rock and roll. Played the, actually played the guitar. And then as the sun's coming up, 
uh, the Keith Richards character comes back and he makes up with Mick Jagger and, and he's back and this guy's out, you know? Right, right, But right. for a few hours, you know, he was, he was in the stones. He was the guy, yeah. And then he packs up his guitar and he gets in his car as the sun is coming up and he drives home and he gets to his house and he gets into bed with, just as his wife is getting up and she says, how'd it go, honey? And he goes, just another session. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's probably a good, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch it. Where would I find it? now it's like know, how many years later question. it's like 30 years 25 years ago right so 25 years ago. yeah i don't know well maybe send me a link and i'll watch if you have it where would it be on like vhs a, or i have a dvd of it a dvd okay yeah you want to see that sure send it to me okay. i'll watch it i mean so how do you think the music music the movie business has changed from now like 2019 where i feel like every movie now being produced or being made are Marvel movies, like superhero movies that are, are going to be a guaranteed surefire hit, right? Yeah. Besides that, and like where you were when you were like at, at the top of the, the peak over there, what else has changed in the movie world? Well, obviously streaming has changed. Right, well, yes. So this, this phenomenon where blockbusters dominated a large percentage of the overall box office began really in the late 70s, mm -hmm. early 80s. I mean, the, the, the phenomenon of a Star Wars eat and ET right. where there were actually this idea of a blockbuster versus a hit started then. And then I even remember uh, looking at all the numbers when I first started at, at Columbia and seeing that Ghostbusters was a, a game changer for that studio. Right. So a smaller and smaller percentage of films uh, consume a higher percentage of the overall revenue. And that's right. been going on now for a long time. The Marvel thing was just a sort of a continuation of that idea that people are drawn to good guys, bad guys, special effects, and a happy ending. You right. know, this idea, and same with animated uh, um, kids' films, that right. these are the things that consume the box office. The heyday, in my view, of films in general was the 70s, right before that happened, when the screenwriter was still great, and mm -hmm. yet production techniques were good, and acting methodologies, we started to get to real acting. Right. You know, the method acting, as it were. So uh, I, the movies from the 70s, I still think to this day, are like the best movies that Hollywood has, uh, as, a, as a period of time. Uh, for me personally, I, you know, if I had a great story to tell, I'd, make a, I'd, I'd do it again. I just am not inspired in that way right now. I'm inspired by an entirely different thing. Different area. That's interesting. So it's not that you didn't really technically leave. You no. just kind of had your run and you were... You, were passionate about that at that moment. And then you had other things you wanted to pursue and you just kind of segued into that basically. Yeah. I, I had a friend who started an internet company in 2000 in 1994 called web TV. And at that time I was the CEO of a company called Savoy pictures, which is a movie studio. Yeah. And what movies were, what, were, what was under Savoy? What movies were under there? Oh, we Simple Plan was a big, uh, big one. Okay, thin, we did a lot. A thin Line Between Love and Hate was there. We did uh, we did an endless number of lower, like twenty million dollar type. Oh, movies. like lower budget movies. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I went on his advisory board, and the internet was just the commercial internet was just starting, and uh, it was. I kept flying back and forth to Silicon Valley and, and, and it, it grabbed my interest in a very dramatic way. This, I, the potential for the internet to me was exciting and more exciting than perhaps making another film. So I started an internet company at that time. It was called What's Hot Now, which was an e-commerce service provider. We, we, we managed all of the online stores for virtually every studio and cable network. And where is it now? Did you sell? It sold. You sold it. Who did you sell it to? QVC. Oh, okay. So you've kind of had like, it seems like you've had like one successful uh, career and then you kind of morphed it to, into another version of another successful career into another. Well, I wouldn't say that. The, the, uh, the, the what's hot now financial experience was a negative. Was not very successful. Yeah, very, even yeah, though that entity bought all the assets, it wasn't a return on investment. Oh. And it was, you know, a I recall at that time, it was 2001 when we had to basically shut it down. I was in a very strange place because here I had built up this movie career, but I had more or less moved out of it into an internet career. Mm -hmm. And I was coming out of something that from a financial standpoint was not a success. And I was a little lost. Like, I, uh, who am I? Right. 
like an idea. You had like a your your identity wasn't really yeah formed. So then how? Okay, so then like go from how you went from the internet. But like how, where did your pivot come into like health and and while I was running what's hot now? Okay. I met a venture capitalist named Frank Caulfield. He had a company called Kleiner, Kleiner Perkins Buyers and Caulfield. And we were at a, a party. That's and a he, really big one, by the way. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. And he's a great guy. We became quite friendly. Okay. And he turned me on to one of his other portfolio companies, which was at, uh, called Geron, which is still around. And Geron was a super cool company, I thought, because they were studying something called telomeres. Oh, Yes. So this is in the 90s. This is in the 90s. So this is so interesting to me because you're saying things that were happening literally 30 years ago that are now, just now, becoming like kind of like people are becoming a little curious about it. Right. Tell people what that is. because So telomeres are little fragments on the exterior of chromosomes. Mm -hmm. And every time the cell divides, that little fragment shrinks a little bit. And when it becomes just the size of a stub, the cell becomes senescent, meaning it functions, but it no longer divides. And and so what I would say, just on very layman's terms, yeah. what why people are interested in that from a health perspective is because it can tell the at the actual age of somebody, right? So isn't that why it's very big right now too? Yeah. The, well, there's theoretically, if I measure the telomeres on your chromato chromosomes, I can tell your metabolic age. Yeah, that's your metabolic age. That's the thesis, yeah. right? So that's why people who are like super fanatical about like longevity and so forth like that, which is now becoming a huge, huge trend. It's about, you could take tests to figure that out. So anyway, this is what I find. Okay, go ahead. So your friend, <laughs> tell him yours, go ahead. It's not my So interview. there was this company that had identified an enzyme called telomerase okay. that existed in certain cell types frankly, notably cancer cells, mm, okay. where if a cell had telomerase, the telomeres would not shrink despite the fact that the cell divided. So their idea was, well, what if we took the telomerase, that enzyme, and we put it into other cell types, could we make them immortal? Oh. And the answer was yes. In other words, that enzyme applied to other cell types could keep the telomeres long even when the cell divides. So they would divide indefinitely, mm. become immortal cells. So I thought that was like incredibly cool. Yeah. And I actually began investing in Geron, in that company at that time, and, and started obsessively reading about that technology and about that science. And I actually endeavored to meet some of the scientists. Wow. Yeah, so I just became uh, interested. Yeah. Despite the fact and that- curious, I, And curious, I think, yeah. Yeah, curious. And also wanting to stay young. Yeah, like most of us in life, right? So, so then what happened? So, this I the 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 science uh, the anti aging science, which really became a big thing with telomeres in the late nineties. The industry sort of started pivoting away from telomeres towards something called sirtuins, Sir, sirtuin genes. Now, I'm telling you the chronology of anti aging science yeah, over the last ahead. twenty years. Yeah. So the, the biochemistry community, the genetics community that was studying anti-aging started becoming more interested in this thing called sirtuins, where, which are a set of genes that apparently get activated when there is extreme caloric restriction. Mm. So when the body consumes very few calories, there, there's a famous Cornell study from the 1930s that shows that animals live longer when they have very restricted calories. Is that why intermittent fasting is very big right now too? Because you're able to restrict your calories and that's part of what this is all about as well? Not, yes, it's related it's to this related. idea. Okay. So there were a bunch of scientists in the late 90s and early 2000s that said, well, we know that if you restrict calories, uh, we can extend life. Can we mimic that with an ingredient? Okay. And can we mimic, can we find a molecule that mimics caloric restriction. And they thought they had found one in the skin of red grapes called resveratrol. Yeah. And it's, it's not. So there was one study where a sick, the equivalent to a 60 year old mouse turned into a physiologically 20 year old mouse when high doses of resveratrol were given to the mouse. And it was, this, it was an incredibly popular, famous study. And that began the red wine craze of that that was that was the root of the whole red wine the red wine paradox the french paradox the red wine craze drink red wine you stay younger 
this idea that it elevates resveratrol, which will activate the sirtuin genes. Sirtuin genes, the, the genetic, the Darwinian philosophy uh, towards sirtuins, uh, sirtuins is that when there's few calories out in the world available to us, the body adjusts, they right. activate these genes so we can survive as a species despite the fact that there are fewer calories available. That's the thesis. Mm -hmm. So they thought they had found a way to activate this gene in, in resveratrol right. and it became a very popular so what happened then? So how did it evolve? Like, so then you're having, what happened to this whole thesis and now 25 years later? Turns out yeah, it doesn't work. It turns out, yeah, I was going to say, besides that. So then what did happen with you and you're, you, you were, you were learning about this and you were meeting with all these scientists and you were figuring this out. So what did you do? Like, what was your next move? At that time, I, after What's Hot Now, I started, I went back and started producing some more movies. I made Collateral. I made something called Man of the Year with Robin Williams. I made something called The Man in Toronto yeah. with Eugene Levy. I made several, quite a few movies. And, but also right around that time, uh, our son, we had a son who was born uh, premature, okay. premature. So I st stayed at home. I, 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 you know, I worked from home for a number of years. Uh, when he was clearly fine, right, and 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 uh, our life was stabilized, I dove back in and I started doing a couple of additional things. One thing I did was formed a startup company, which was called Spirit Clips in two thousand and seven. Uh, which Spirit Clips was um, my kids were little. And I uh, wanted to create a body of work <laughs> that they, when they became of consciousness, they could look at and right. feel proud. This is who we are. So it was a large collection of life affirming stories of inspiration and hope. They're oh, all real, nice. like powerful, like little mini Rudy's type of thing. Little stories of overcoming obstacles there are. Stories about redemption, stories about Where hope. is that now? Where are all these? Spirit Clips was sold to Hallmark. Oh, okay. So then, but you can still find these little, little yeah. stories. Okay. Cause I have got little kids. And they have a streaming site called Hallmark movies now, which was this company called spirit clips is now called Hallmark movies now. God, yeah. 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 No, I know what that. Yeah. But all during that time, I continued to obsessively read about this anti-aging research and science. And I was, you know, if you worked with me during that spirit clips era that you would I would know. Joke about it because I was always talking about resveratrol and NAD and and all the. Well, we're going to get to the NAD because I find this interesting because you're basically again somebody who um, was extremely curious and very interested in longevity and anti aging, and then you made that curiosity really your livelihood and your business and what you focused on, and that became successful. Like like it's a, I feel like a lot of people who are very entrepreneurial or who are very successful entrepreneurs, the, the, the through line is they took something that they were superly obsessed over, curious, whatever the word is, and basically focused on it to make it a business. And which leads me, I guess, what you just said, like NAD, like, so you realize that from all this stuff, where did this come from? Like, not true niagen yet, but like NAD. So explain to people like what your evolution was, like how you then became involved with obviously chromadex and the ingredient with it and so it turns out that sirtuins are not activated by resveratrol right that's where we left off right and the scientists were trying to figure out why right and one thesis was that it requires a tremendous amount of energy to activate sirtuin genes so they said well how does energy get created inside the cell and the way energy gets created, I mean, look, the, the human body it cre creates more energy per gram than the sun. Wow. The human body is basically an energy factory. Yeah, that we know. But that's, that's a great stat. Say that again. It's, it's, <laughs> it's what, what's the number? More energy more? per gram than wow. the sun. Wow, okay. Interesting. I didn't know that. 
So actually, there's like probably another great, amazing startup opportunity within what I just said, but that's a future career. Yeah, I was going to say. But, <laughs> but you could, it could be like, it, it could be basically, a, um, it could be like maybe a side, a side hustle. Right. Maybe. Okay. So then, yeah, so go on. So tell me, so you figure so it out. So we eat food and we eat, breathe air and the, and certain mo molecules from the food we eat combine with the oxygen within the cell in, in within an organelle called mitochondria to create what we call adenosine triphosphate ATP or energy. Mm -hmm. ATP is essentially, essentially energy within the cell. And it's created by these organelles called mitochondria. And in order for mitochondria to create that energy, they need very high levels of NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, NAD. Right. NAD is vital, is a, is a key metabolite for converting food into ATP. Right. So what we... What the scientists said was, well, maybe the NAD levels are too low to activate these sirtuin genes. And they started looking into NAD, uh, elevating NAD uh, in order to activate the sirtuin genes. And it turns out they realized, wait a minute, NAD levels really decline like as we age. I was gonna, yeah, exactly. So we produ people produce NAD, yeah. but it does decline as you age. So yeah. so how do you, how do people then, so you're trying to figure out how to then give, give, get, well, you can tell me. I'll, okay. Yeah. But please. you're doing good. Yeah, thank you. I'm trying, but so I'm a big believer in NAD, and I just so I want to be. I want you to explain. Like I, I was telling you earlier. I used to get the. I still do. I get these IVs of NAD, and why I get them is because it's great for anti aging. It's great for focus. It's great for energy, and it's. I thought the best way to get it into your system is obviously through IV. Then before, like I said, I even knew you, I found these true niogen um, supplements, which is a much more accessible way to do it. Um, a so, better way to do it. And I'll explain I, to you why. Yeah, exactly. But I want people to understand like NAD to me, I mean, yeah, of course I may know because I'm in the health space, you too. But for people who don't know, that's why I want you to kind of tell people like what it is and not what it is, but like why it's so beneficial and and why you're, you're basically dedicating your career now to this thing. Because when we realize that NAD declines, it, the more accurately it's, you can describe it as NAD declines under stress and, and getting old right. is stressful in a lot of ways. <laughs> but yes, it is. it's physiological stress. Mm. So and, uh, getting old qualifies as physiological stress. And, and virtually every uh, age-related disorder that you can think of is also associated with a decline in NAD. Mm. So this was discovered, there was a published study in 2010 that said, you know, NAD declines with years. And then in 2012, in December of 2012, another study was published that replicated that original resveratrol mouse study that showed if we elevate NAD levels, indeed, we can turn a 60-year-old mouse into a 20-year-old mouse physiologically. And concurrent with that- A 20-year-old mouse? That's a the big equivalent. difference. It's like a, a yeah. mouse lives two years. Yeah. So it's okay, like I was the, gonna say that's a big, okay, yeah. The equivalent. Yes. Well, so For that, a person though, what would it do? Do you have those, do you have those stats? We do not have stats on how it affects longevity. Okay, we don't, okay. No, what because do we how would you do on? that? Well, it's interesting. Uh, True niogen is an ingredient. The scientific name is nicotinamide riboside. And nicotinamide riboside is a precursor to NAD. Meaning, okay. meaning if you take true niogen, it will elevate NAD levels. And your, that your body already naturally produces. Yes, but it declines it. under stress and with age. But if you take a supplement of it, what is it? It basically helps produce it? Yeah. Okay. So if you just take NAD, like you're doing when you get the IV, the problem with NAD, pure NAD as a molecule, is it's ionized. It's, it has a phosphate on it. it there is, because of the uh, chemical structure, the molecular structure of NAD, there is no known transport mechanism for NAD to penetrate the cell. Mm. So the majority of it is you're, you're peeing out. That's with, I think that's with anything, right? Like even if you take a vitamin C drip or an IV, right? Like if you're, if you're overproducing it, you'll pee it out anyway, right? If your body can't handle that amount at if once. If there's an excess. If there's, a, if there's an excess, you'll pee it out. 
Yeah. That's what, so that's why there's a, there's a lot of like controversy even over IVs in general, right? Because some people say they're like silly. If you don't need it and you're putting it in your body, you're going to, you're going to pee it out anyway. And there are other doctors who are big staunch believers in it, right? It's like very controversial in that way. So to talk about NAD IV for a second. Yeah. So as I said, NAD as a molecule has a hard time getting inside the cell. So what we believe happens is when you uh, do an IV NAD drip, mm -hmm. much of it converts into truniagen, into nicotinamide riboside in the blood. Okay. And then penetrates the cell. Okay. Once, once it's inside the cell, it's, an, it's miraculous what happens. It, it, it very efficiently and very safely converts into NAD inside the cell. Once you have elevated NAD levels inside the cell, you have higher levels of first and foremost ATP. There's actually more energy. Even without adding calories, your cell is a bulkier, stronger, right, right, more, right. more energized cell. Right. But it also activates all the repair enzymes in the cell. So many people who do these NAD IV drips, uh, first of all, it takes like four hours to get a gram of that. You're telling me, I, listen, first of all, not only that, it's very uncomfortable. Like you're nauseous when you're doing there's it. There's nausea, there's chest pains, there's headaches, there's side effects. No, there's a lot of side effects. It's not, it's not pleasant by One any stretch. thesis why is because NAD doesn't penetrate the cell and it's converting into NR. So then let me ask you this. I mean... Take I, NR and you'll elevate NAD levels and you won't have any of those side effects and you could do it orally. Take but, NR is true niagen. No, I know, I know. Okay. So wh why, what I'm, conf I'm, cons I'm curious, I guess, to say about it is that what I found with a lot of um, IVs, you take it initially, I, I felt it the first few times. Like you felt it, I felt it the next couple of days. Like I felt more energy and like more like, more like more focused and alert. But then I feel like the fourth or fifth or sixth time you take them, they lose the efficacy. And I thought they were losing the effect, like the effectiveness is because my body already had so much of it already that like it's met, it's kind of capped its level, so to speak. That's what well, I we, thought. We don't have any published studies on NAD IV drips. Right. We have well over a hundred true niogen studies. Right. And when I say, you know, I'll just give you a little perspective. So Chromadex historically as a company mm -hmm. uh, was, was a testing and ingredient company. And I can okay. tell you the story of how I got involved. I was going to say, like, how, so how did, I mean, I knew you were obsessed with longevity and anti-aging and NAD, but how did you then get into this Chromadex then, which is the company that produces it? Like what's... Okay, so... Go, go chronological. Go chronological. Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. so... When I read those studies, I was working at Hallmark because they had acquired that company right. that I had formed. And I, I you know, I, every, virtually everybody knew that I had like a little bit of a intellectual obsession about the science of aging and NAD and telomeres and resveratrol and sirtuins, et cetera, et cetera. You're probably 265, but I'm look great for going your age. On it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so when I read that study, uh, it, it went to another level mm -hmm. because now I realized that everything has pretty much been theoretical up until now, but now there may be an actual actionable thing that mm -hmm. one can do. And so I, I researched it on almost a different level now and found that there was a company in Irvine called Chromadex, mm -hmm. which is this chemistry lab of uh, incredible scientists, chemists, you know, biochemists, lab technicians, that was formed by you know a great chemist named Frank Jacks, uh, still on our board, still at the company, that uh, had developed a portfolio of interesting ingredients that they were supplying to mostly the dietary supplement business. Mm -hmm. And one of those ingredients is this thing called nicotinamide riboside that safely and elevates wow. NAD levels. And I looked at it and I thought, holy geez. So they were a manufacturer, really. Yeah, yeah. basically. So I, I started investing in the company quite a bit. Mm. And, and getting to meet him and uh, it was publicly traded and uh, meeting the scientists. Mm -hmm. They had a, a relationship with the, the inventor of nicotinamide riboside. I became friendly with him, a guy named Dr. Charles Brenner. And eventually I went on the board. In 2015, I went on the board of directors of uh, Chromadex mm -hmm. and got to look inside of what was happening at the company. And I thought it was an interesting company that wasn't really growing, but was sitting on an ingredient that changes people's lives, mm -hmm. probably the most important ingredient of all time. 
And I'm just going to give you a little anecdote relating back to before the studies of what, an indication of how important nicotinamide riboside is. If you're a company like Chromadex that develops portfolios of ingredients, so what does that mean, develops a portfolio of ingredients? It means I heard a rumor that there was a tribe in Peru that you know, would chew on an ancient <laughs> root to cure arthritis. Right, okay. And so they got that ingredient that was found in the root and they patented it and then they started selling it to that supplement companies. Okay. That's right. an ingredient company. Okay. Right, right, right. If a company like that gets a phone call from a Harvard right. and says, you know, we hear you have this Peruvian root. We at our expense would like to do a, a study on your Peruvian root to see if it in fact is effective against arthritis or whatever indication at our expense. A phone call like that's a good call for an Absolutely. ingredient company. And if a call like that happens five times or 10 times, you hit a home run with your ingredient. Right, absolutely. But in the last six years, Chromadex has, has received over 170 of those calls. Wow. From Harvard, from Mayo Clinic, from Scripps Research Institute, from NIH, from Cambridge, from Oxford, from Dartmouth, from Cornell, from Pick a first-rate biochemistry research institute, and they aren't studying nico their ingredient nicotinamide riboside. And the reason for that is because for decades, scientists have understood the relationship between NAD and, and metabolism. And this discovery that NAD declines suggests, well, wait a minute, there are all these diseases that are associated with metabolism. Mm -hmm. Anything related to aging is metabolic. Arthritis, diabetes, Alzheimer's, cancers, hearing loss, cognitive loss. Indeed, anywhere there's a high concentration of cells, elevating NAD would have a therapeutic benefit, theoretically. So there's all these studies being done. So are you guys the only company? I feel like this is an ad for the company, and it's actually not. Sorry. It's not actually. Yeah. No, 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 it's not you. I mean, it's, just, it's, it's what it is, though, right? Like, is there any yeah. other um, company in the world that actually produces this ingredient? Not legally. But, okay, so you're the only legal company yes. that produces it. And the only one that has patents, legal right, FDA approval, safety studies. With, you know, if you're, gonna, if you're interested in elevating NAD, which everybody should be, I think it should be in the water supply. Okay, yeah. You should take Truniagen and nothing else. That should be the, your source for so, doing it. Okay, so Chromadex um, manufactures mm. the, um, the ingredient, which I can't even pronounce. Nicotinamide. Yeah. Riboside. Okay, you said that. Perfect. You do it. And then nicotine. Um, not bad. Okay, not bad. Right. <laughs> um, and then that ingredient goes into True Niagen. Now, is True Niagen its own entity then? No, it's it's a brand. It's owned a brand by under Chromadex, right? Correct. Okay, gotcha. Okay. So then, what, who, do you guys sell to other big supplement companies too who are there also are, doing it? There are a couple of companies to whom we supply it. We call it Niagen. Okay. So you can buy Niagen. There are one or two other uh, dietary supplement companies that are offering Niagen for the time being and perhaps longer. We okay. are doing that. And we made a deal with Nestle. Oh, uh, who, okay. And Nestle is interested in putting Niagen in Boost. Really? Okay. But probably, little, like, probably very small amounts. Like, probably like uh, no, actually, they want to put a fair amount of it in there because the amount of published studies... And it's the, expensive, though. It is expensive. That's probably the main issue you know it's not cheap it's not cheap like how much yeah. does a bottle of this go for i think it, the retail price is 47 bucks 47 bucks okay yeah. so then let's say okay so then under chromadex you have this product that has true niagen so you sell it to other people it's, it's the same product though virtually right if they if it's it, called niagen it's right it's probably legit there are just so many companies trying to jump on the bandwagon and one or two is actually blatantly you know, stealing, you know, in, in terms right. of infringing on the patent that I'd run from that. Not only is it illegal, but there's a safety concern. And in China, you're, we see a lot of that in uh, uh, companies claiming to have nicotinamide riboside in, 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 in China. Okay. So then what, okay. So how did you become the CEO? So you were on the board, you were an investor. So you're basically an investor in yeah. Chromadex. You became a board member. And then what, how did you become the CEO of the company? You just wanted to one day and said, this is my money, so I'm going to be... Like, what happened? Like, what was the process? Well, I got to know the other board members and some of the large investors. And 
the company was experiencing some issues and it, it needed a new, I had, I, I had a, I proposed a new strategic direction for the company okay. where we focus less on analytical testing right. and on ingredients and on this one ingredient. And we become the one company focused on this ingredient and NAD in general. And the existing management team was, they, the board and the investors liked that idea, but the existing management team was not constructed to do that. Right, right, right. They weren't storytellers. They weren't consumer-facing people. So they, the board asked me if I would yeah, do it that. Yeah, like it seems like you're a natural fit, given the background that you have. See? And, right? It's not, not such a big change it's, after it's all. It's actually not at all. Exactly. <laughs> what was I thinking? You can go home now. No, so so basically it makes sense. So then True Niagen is the one product's or when one company with under the umbrella of Chromadex Correct. that you're really focusing on. So then how are sales? Like what, how? When I, I mean, I went in as initially as the president of the company in March of 2017. Mm -hmm. That's a little over two years ago. That first quarter, we did true knowledge and sales of about $100,000. Okay. Last quarter, uh, I believe we did about 9 million. Okay, wow, that's a big jump. And where, what's your projections for next quarter or next year or of course it's a public company so we don't provide projections of course not but you could the the growth trajectory has been significant as people are learning about nad and learning about true niagen and learning about the company and the commitment this particular company has to uh, safety and and compliance with the fda our relationship with the fda is excellent we are committed you know, one thing that has been surprising to me since coming in and, and, and operating this business is the, frankly, unscrupulousness of the dietary supplement business. Well, there's no, like, there's no, it's like the barrier to entry is very minimal. Well, Anyone could just basically, you could put a shingle on your door and, call, and do it, right? That's the problem. And there are some very impressive people at the FDA who run the dietary supplements division, and I've met with them a few times, and I'm really impressed with them. And believe in their conviction that they need to protect the public, mm -hmm. but it's intensely underfunded. Right. Oh, so there, yeah. it's very difficult for them to enforce the, the, the regulations, the rules that right. exist. But they understand that the percentage, if you buy a dietary supplement in store, the chances are it's not what it says it is. Right. That's really bad. Right. Or it doesn't, it doesn't do what it says it's going to do. Yeah, you've got a health claims issue and then you've got an actual ingredient and labeling issue. Right. These are important issues. It's, well, it's deadly. If it's, it's deadly. Yes. And there are examples of people who have been hurt. So how do people, how do you prevent that from, if you're, say, if you're saying they're underfunded and anybody with, this, anyone can just call, kind of just say and do what they want, the barrier is so low, how do you protect that from happening? Like from, like what's. That we are approaching it in two ways. One is by being the best in the industry. By having a brand that's trusted, not because you like our marketing materials, but because you like our science. Mm -hmm. And that we don't put a product in the market unless we have done ex exceptional amount of not only safety training, but eff studies, but eff efficacy as well. The, one of the ingredients that we had was an ingredient called terastilbene. Okay. Terra well, still bean. <laughs> Terra still bean. I could say that one. That's well easy done. One. Thank you. Thank you. I get an A plus over there. And what does that do? Terra still bean is a cousin to resveratrol. Mm, okay. Only it comes from blueberries, not from red grapes. Oh. So that's an interesting ingredient. And, and the company was doing quite a bit of revenue selling that ingredient. Mm -hmm. But a study came out that indicated that it elevates LDL cholesterol. Mm, really? We no longer sell it. It's off the market, at least from Chromadex. Wow, that's so responsible. So we know. ate, we're eating the loss. Because if you don't invest in the brand, if you don't invest in, in the credibility, then, you're, then, then whatever credibility you have as a brand is phony. Right. So the best way to be trusted is to be trustworthy. Yeah. And so my first answer to the question of how you solve that problem is by leading by example. And that's our commitment as a company at Chromadex. And the other is to develop our relationship with the industry and with the FDA and with the other regulatory bodies. There's a patent process, there's an FTC, there's an FDA. They are here for a purpose, to protect us. Right. How, how are you educating people on NAD? Like, I, I know I just kind of gave a very uh, watered down, you know, definition of what it is. But can you tell people what, like, what exactly are the benefits of taking it? And then we can go into, like, the other products, actually. Sure. Or if we have time, but. 
How are we doing on time? Well, you had to be out of here. Okay. Just, <laughs> well, there's two questions you asked. One is how does one uh, get the word out, and the other is what. Well, are how the are you guys educating people on what NAD is, and what exactly are the benefits of NAD on a much more, you know, a little more detailed than just me saying it's great for energy and cognitive function and alertness. Just give me, give me, maybe give me a few other little benefits. Well, how are we getting? Who should take it? Who should take it? Okay. That's three questions. I know. That's my. That's why you're going to be here for four and a half hours. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Sorry. the first question is, there are certain very smart, very progressive, very well-researched podcasters mm -hmm. that are inviting us to come on and speak and <laughs> talk about it. That's true. That's true. Okay. Good to know. Yes. Thank you. I take that as a compliment. Go on. Next. The benefits to NAD... You have to be careful because until there's a published clinical study, you can't make an actual health claim. And that's good that the FTC protects us this way. So why don't, okay, so, okay. There are five human clinical studies that have been published. Okay. And there's a website called clinicaltrials.gov, which shows that there are 40 total being done. So most of them have yet to be published. So what are you comfortable saying that it's good What for? we can tell you is that it's safely, that true niogen safely and efficiently elevates NAD levels in the cells. And we test blood cells and you show that it elevates NAD. And we also show it elevates ATP, energy within the cells. So we can say basically its benefit is energy, increased energy, because you feel comfortable saying that, um, a decrease in inflammation, um, an increase in, what did you say? Because you were using a lot of very big words. NAD, ATP. Right, but and that's energy, inflammation. What, other, what was the other one that you said you, can't, you, you feel comfortable saying the benefit is? I forgot. Okay, well, maybe you should take more <laughs> of the NAD. The other thing that, it, that we can say is that it promotes the repair of the cell. Right, so repair, right. So, so that's a big one though, cell Enormous, cell this repair. is why so many athletes are taking that's it. That's why, I mean, this is why, this is why I'm a big, yes. That's why a lot of people, I feel like that's why I, w I was very interested in this because I know that it's becoming much more known, um, more mainstream, but it's still not mainstream. And I think it's a very important thing to kind of get out to the public. So, um, so the question is who should take it was the third question. Right. And that was my other question. The, you know, g getting old sucks. Yeah. You're telling me. Well, you don't know. Well, thank you. That's very nice of you to but say. But here's unfortunately the truth. At some point you will. Yeah. Well, I, I'm feeling it. I mean, yes, I get what you're saying. It's all relative, but... You're saying people as they age after, is there an age you're saying people should start taking Well, it we show that NAD levels begin to decline in your 20s. Wow. that's a, So, and then like, what's the percent? You don't know the percentage of decline? There have been publications, there's literature out there that's saying you have half as much at 40 as you have at 20. And then at 60? Half as much at 60 as you have at 40. Wow. So then if people take NAD daily, can you say what that, what? Yeah, it will, it will elevate for two or three weeks if you take it every day. Mm -hmm. Our, the FDA recommended dosage of true niogen is 300 milligrams. Okay. Candidly, I take much more, but... You do? How much? So how much would you take of this stuff? I take 600 milligrams a day. And then if my which body... How many pills? That's, which, uh, four. Four, okay. But when I am experiencing any kind of physiological stress, mm. like I was out in the sun or I traveled, you know, across country, mm -hmm. or I stayed up late, or... You know, I had a couple too many drinks or mm. I'm fighting something. I know that the cells are fighting. I know skin cells are fighting radiation. I know this. So, right. So right. I help them. Right. I'm helping right. them. So I up the dose. You're up the dose. So what other products do you guys even have under Chromadex that like you're focusing on besides? If NAD? we could find a, chrom a product that was this great, I promise you we'd sell it. Right. But right now. It's this one. This is the main. Look, every really people should be taking this thing. I mean, a lot of people have back pain. A lot of people have trouble sleeping at night. A lot of people don't heal quite as quickly. They're, they're working out, but they don't work out quite as well as they used to work out. No, I get you. What happens with people who don't, I mean, you, you said yourself, it's not exactly, a, it's not like it's like a $5 bottle. No. What do you do? I mean, for, to, to hit the mainstream, you have to have a price point that's much more acceptable to yeah. everybody, right? Yeah, it's expensive, unfortunately. So what do you tell, what do you do for that? Do you dilute it and sell at it? Do you, do you eventually like roll out a product that's a little bit more diluted that has some of it? 
by Nestle's Boost. I mean, I don't know, you should come help us at market. Uh, I know, you right? Should, uh, you guys, you guys can't afford me. No, that's probably true. Yeah, well, but we just, could try. We can. You can try. We can have a. We can have a conversation <laughs> offline. The, the, we do show a dose response as low as 100 milligrams a day, going up to a gram a day. We okay. do show that there's within a few hours your NAD levels are elevated even as low as 100 milligrams a so day. So even a little bit is better than nothing. Correct. Okay, well that's 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 good to know. Right. So these are just very concentrated, but right. I mean, so then okay, so now okay, so I think basically I know you guys got to run. So what we can do is we can like wrap this up if you want, and um, we can just kind of wrap this up and then we can come back you can come back and we can talk about other things that are basically on my little cheat sheet of stuff to talk about it's my pleasure is that Any, good anytime all right so rob how do people find you chromadex give us the whole spiel me personally how about not you personally well i don't think you want people but in how do people like know about where they find triniagen chromadex blah 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 it is in a few specialty retail stores right now but really where, in, where they sell i think uh bristol farms Okay. Uh, press juicery and bulletproof coffee presently sell in the U.S. Okay. In Canada, it's in Whole Foods Canada, a Well Health Canada. This is in Whole Foods um, in the U.S. No. Hmm. Why? The retail business has got its own set of economics, so mm -hmm. we're really just an online company. Got it. And we're really just TrueNigen.com and Amazon.com. Right. Well, Amazon could be a massive. Uh, beast for you if you if you do really well good at digital marketing and facebook ads and can you be helpful with that you never know maybe okay i mean this is a, <laughs> listen this could be a whole this could be a whole other situation um well this sounds great okay guys so that's basically this is rob freed uh movie producer to um ceo of a very innovative health company called chromadex it was a pleasure having you uh, on the podcast Habits and Hustle. And I'm going to leave with what, what one thing because this is a called Habits and Hustle. Give me three habits you do every single day besides taking true niogen. I have coffee with my wife every morning. Okay. What time do you wake up every morning? 6.37. Okay. Another one. Give me two more habits. I work out every night at 10, 10 p.m. What do you do for your workout? What's my daily routine? Yes. First of all, I love to watch... I'm obsessive about baseball, and I'm also obsessed about um, excellent limited television series. Which ones do you like to watch? The one that, I, I mean, I literally watch almost everything. I'm watching, presently watching Designated Survivor, All right. which was on ABC. Oh, okay. Is there anything else that you can recommend? Yeah. I mean, I love... Give me two ones to recommend, too. Uh, uh, okay, well, I, I've, I watch them all. I loved... Um, I loved uh breaking bad and i loved uh that's an obvious one breaking bad and what's an obscure one that i love yeah because you're like a yeah you should or yes i mean one movie that's obscure peaky that blinders is that a movie or i loved show? peaky blinders no it's a, a it's a limited series. british limited series okay also the bodyguard was great did you see that one no i didn't see that the bodyguard one. was a great limited series from bbc so was peaky blinders i heard so it was, another, was good I watched all of shit. So you're okay. Yes. I'm going to be watching that like in the it was next overrated, days. but I, sorry if you're the filmmaker. I liked it. It was overrated. Really? But okay. I loved Fauda, which. Oh, uh, I love Fauda. These are Israeli true. shows yeah. actually. So. And then there was a great one called Taboo, which is also. No. Another Israeli one? No, that's oh. a, that was on USA Network. Oh, was it? It was also okay. a BBC produced or a British produced, or British production. Anyway, I, I really enjoy watching uh, these things. I, f I just finished the fourth season of i forgot what it was called anyway i watch a lot of these series and i also watch a lot of baseball so what i do is i get on the bike for an hour okay and i watch the limited series and then i do another half hour of ice you know weights so at t always at night always at night 9 30 10 and then i shower and go to bed hmm i like that normally you hear the reverse in the morning we do that but so that works as long as you're getting it in doesn't matter when you're doing it and i'm always feeling like i have tremendous amount of energy and just years ago i wouldn't be able have been able to do that i know why that is i right. wonder why <laughs> all right well thank you so much for coming on rob it was a pleasure and hopefully i'll see you again soon on this podcast it's or, warm in here did you think I, that's beyond i'm sweating my ass off so that's why we've got to wrap this up thank you guys okay. thanks rob thank you jen bye-bye 
habits and hustle time to get it rolling stay up on the grind don't stop keep it going habits and hustle from nothing into something all out hosted by jennifer cohen visionaries tune in you can get to know them be inspired this is your moment excuses we ain't having that the habits and hustle podcast powered by habit nest